hello from Astana. Otherwise known as Nur Sultan, I'm at home getting ready for my new flight. Yeah. I'm flying S7 Air. Airlines on their E170 and Airbus A320neo to Yuzhno Satellites. Let's see what happens. We checked into the airport about two and a half hours prior to departure, which was plenty of time, considering the fact that the Astana International Airport is very small. After these ticket gates, you go through passport control so, and security, and on the working. other side, <laughs> on the other side, on the second floor, there are three cafes: a local Kazakh one, a Segafredo Zanetti, and a Marona Rosso, which is where I'm going today. I've also discovered a capsule hotel, which is pretty awesome. We sat there about zero minutes until zero minutes prior to departure. This is what I ate: a cheesecake and an ice Marona Rosso. And so we started hurrying towards the gate because uh, up there it's pretty hard to hear when the torch time is. So this is what the jet bridge looks like. We hurried as fast as we could, realizing the fact that we were one of the last passengers to board. And this is the seat. This E170 is pretty small, but has plenty of legroom for a one and a half hour long flight. It's great. And that is the apron of Astana International Airport. In the seat pocket, you will find the instruction, the safety instructions with a gorgeous map of the airplane on the back, as you may see here. We departed about 15 minutes late, but at least we got to see the new Flyer Astan livery on the Air Astana's new low-cost carrier. And we started our long, long journey to the beginning point of runway 04 of Nur Sultan Nazarbayev International Airport. After waiting for a CRJ from SCAT Airlines uh, touching down, we got our clearance to take off and enjoy. As we got closer to a cruising altitude, we got our final looks of the North Kazakh steppe, as well as some beautiful wing views. The route we will be taking today, it takes us northeast, 1 hour and 25 minutes to the Siberian city of Novosibirsk. As soon as we got to her cruising altitude, the pilot was nice enough to give her flight information in both Russian and in English. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain speaking has suggested to listen information about our flight. We are flying at an altitude of 10,000 meters at a speed of uh, 880 kilometers per hour. The outer temperature is minus 53 degrees centigrade. We will arrive to Tomachova uh, airport, Novosibirsk, at uh, 8 o'clock p.m. local time. The difference starts between Tomachova and Novosibirsk is plus one hour. Thank you. Let's take a look at the tray table. The tray table is big, sturdy, and fills up all of the space between the seat in front of you and your lap. Also, it's more than enough space to fit the snack that they give you on the flight, which is either cheese or chicken sandwich, and I opted for the chicken sandwich. So I'm going to try the chicken sandwich. It's edible, that's the main thing. Um, I give it a, it's what you eat when you just want to fill up your stomach and you don't care if it's tasty or not. Yeah, that's basically what it is. Tomato juice, always good. Also, by the amount of plastic created, ecologically friendly pass. Pink Lakes? Is that normal? Comment below. So let's take a look at the entertainment provided, which is just paper. Here are the safety instructions for our aircraft. Um, yeah, that's the airplane. Pretty interesting design. That is the S7 Magazine. 
Uh, it has a lot of articles in Russian. I haven't spotted any in English at all. Um, all related to Russia, basically. Um, and in the back, other than this ad, it has a route map. And as you can see, they fly an extensive route network from Moscow Domodedovo Airport, Novosibirsk Tomachova Airport, Irkutsk Airport, and Vladivostok Airport, from Tokyo to Hong Kong to Phuket to uh, uh, Dubai and to the far corners of Europe as well as Central Asia. I'd say that's a very impressive route network for considering which aircraft they operate. Speaking of aircraft they operate, here they are. They operate the Embraer 170, the one that we're flying on right now, the Airbus A319, the Airbus A320, the A320neo, which we'll be flying on in the future, the Airbus A321, the Airbus A321neo, the Boeing 737-800, and the Boeing 737 MAX 8. But that one is unavailable because of the MAX crisis. Now let's take a look at the internet. Once we go into settings, let's go to Wi-Fi. And guess what? This Emperor 170 must be unequipped with Wi-Fi services because there is no Wi-Fi, therefore I may not use the entertainment app, as is demonstrated here. During the flight, my mother's headlight fell off, so she had to call the flight attendant to fix it. And I also noticed that in between the two windows of my seat, there was a little mosquito stuck there. That's kind of weird. You might want to fix that S7 Airlines. I was in row three. The scenery was amazing. We flew for, as I said earlier, an hour and 25 minutes. And as we approached Russia, uh, Novosibirsk must have experienced a thunderstorm for us landing because there were a lot of cumulonimbus clouds. Nevertheless, we started our descent into Tomachova Airport. And there we go, the first leg of the trip is done. As soon as we enter the airport, this happened. So we look for the plane. There's transfer. The new one is here. We landed on runway 7 and we arrived at the international terminal. The international terminal is the one on the left and the one on the right is the domestic terminal. And be aware that you have to actually pass passport control and physically go from left to right but to get to the domestic terminal. You'll know that you're in the domestic terminal as soon as you see this weird sculpture that looks like it's from a fairy tale. As soon as you pass another passport, passport checkpoint, uh, you will find this moving walkway, and which will take you all the way to the terminal. The first thing you'll see is a store which looks like from, again, a fairy tale. This is a common theme of this airport for some reason. Alright, I'm here at Novosibirsk at a uh, Hamovniki no, that's not what this place is called. I don't know what this place is called. I just know that it's a beer, the beer restaurant. And I ordered a Coca-Cola at a beer restaurant. Kill me. You have permission. Alright, basically. Stuff you didn't see behind the scenes is the fact that once we got there, there was a transfer place, but it was locked. So a thing that they never tell you is that to transfer from an international flight to a domestic flight, you have to actually leave the airport and then come back in again. 
and get into and go to the domestic terminal. There is no like passenger that connects the international terminal with the domestic terminal like in Astana where they want you to know that they're a transfer hub for the future. So they clearly mark everything. They always have people there even if there's no flights. So just keep that in mind for um, people that don't have Russian passports or a CIS member state passport. You're going to have a hard time because you might have to stay at the airport for eight hours and do a whole new visa for three days just to get in or go back home where you came from. So that's the minus about this airport. Otherwise, Otherwise, you can have a great carbonara and a great Coca-Cola at the restaurant, which is actually called Kamovniki. I got it right for the first time. They serve a lot of international beer. Mm -hmm. And there is our aircraft coming late from Krasnodar, an A320neo standing next to a Boeing 737 MAX. After being late for about 20 to 30 minutes with the boarding process, we finally got on. This is the time where I'll encourage you to follow my Instagram at Antoine2003, where you'll have a more updated view of my trips whenever I'm on them. got on my seat was in row one in the seat F I believe and that is how it looked like it is a brand new and wonderful armchair and they have a really cool S7 logo also they hand, hand out San Benedetto bottled water which is uh, very generous of them that's us getting ready for departure and Boeing 737 Max next door they give out pre-departure drinks. I chose the orange juice. It's a very nice beverage holder right there that slides out from your armrest. Works perfectly fine. There is a USB power port there, an actual outlet down there. That is the bottled water that I bought because of my economy class habits. They give out a uh, blanket a purple pillow, it's pretty comfortable, and that is how you would climb the seats. Shortly before departure, we were handed out bar cards and menus, and uh, that's what the bar card had, pretty wide variety, if you ask me. And uh, for dinner tonight, we had three options, the fish, the turkey and the pasta, and for the morning we had puff pastry. Takeoff took about 30 minutes. Let's look at the route map. We had a southeastern direction towards the city of Yuzhnosakhonsk, flew above Irkutsk in China. And they hand out these really cool bags with slippers where you can keep your stuff in. Let's look at the tray table. That's where you get to get it out of. It folds out into a drink table. And then you can fold one half of it out to have a full table. There is no um, resting spot that you put it on. It just hangs in midair, as you can see there. Um, it's not quite as stable as it would have been awesome, but um, I mean, stuff isn't that hard. That's how you get out of there during the meal service. And so now it's time to look at the mini kit. That's how it came. That is a uh, moisturizer that they hand out and the bag. And that is the whole amenity kit laid out. Here's an eye mask, some uh, earplugs, uh, a bunch of hand lotion and lip balm by a Siberian company, which I found quite cool.
and uh, that is a uh, description of everything. And those stickers are stuff you put on your eye mask to let the flight attendant know if you want to be woken up for your meal service or not. And that's the toothbrush, and that is the moisturizer. You put it on to supposedly refresh your skin. That is a thin package with uh, probably one tenth the amount of product you get if you bought it in a real store. But I mean, that's all you probably need in a five hour flight. And that is the bag that it came in, branded with the airline's logo. So no designer company decided to go for it. And that's mouthwash. It's pretty nice. So when meal service started, they gave out these little towelettes, which were cold. But why not do that? Afterwards, we got warm nuts, and uh, since I am underage, I didn't take any alcohol. <laughs> I just took a tomato juice. And then we had our appetizers handed out. Then the main dish, which I went for the turkey. That is what the pasta looked like that my brother had received. And that is dessert. That is a cake of sorts with tea. Of course, this is an exaggerated example of the joke where a person kept getting a spoon stuck in his eye and he's like, why does my eye hurt whenever I drink tea? And then that is my rude passenger uh, neighbor, who is also known as my brother, who disapproves of what I do. <laughs> Let's check out the bathroom. It is all enough for me to fit, which is already a good thing, since I'm 185 centimeters, which is about 6'1", 6 feet 1 inch. We have plenty of paper of all sorts. The actual toilet bowl is clean. It's wonderful. Um, that is how the sink works. And of course, there are no special amenities like in Emirates Business Class, but uh, this was pretty cheap for business class, so it's good. Now let's take a look at the in-flight Wi-Fi. On our last flight, as you may remember, it did not work. But unlike our last flight, there is an in-flight Wi-Fi on this airplane. So I tried connecting to it, and for a very long time, it did not connect, as you may see here. Um, I had to wait for a minute or two before it got connected. Because how else would I show you how the in-flight entertainment app works? So a minute passed and I noticed that there were, was one bar of Wi-Fi and two bars of Wi-Fi and eventually it grew to more bars of Wi-Fi. So that's how the S7 Airlines entertainment app looks like. Welcome to S7 Airlines. Those are the in-flight maps and our route map. Uh, we had three and a half more hours before we would land at the time I was filming that, although that is a little bit of an understatement. Uh, they have four different languages, Chinese, Russian, English, and German. Да, сначала салатик, 
потом основное блюдо. И потом десерт с чаем. Какой сервис? Приятное есть в Приятное отношение. Спасибо за интервью. Бизнесмен Сергей. Все. Eastern Russia. We're about to land in 30 minutes and breakfast is served. This is an eclair with chicken liver, the lady said. It's definitely chocolate. And this is coffee. So every flight comes with an ecological cost, and here's how much plastic I made. All the trash. It's been more than usual, but what do you expect? It's long haul travel. It happens. is completely gone so you may have noticed that the, my voice and the way my mouth is moving is not synchronized in some places that is because the sound was almost completely gone in those videos and I had to re-record based on what I saw from like lip reading etc so I don't know what's wrong it's my iPhone 6s plus it has a weird um, glitch I guess with the microphone. Thankfully the interview that I recorded I didn't have to re-record because it was filmed on my brother's phone uh, in iPhone SE. Um, otherwise yeah, thank you for watching the video.